I'm a girl and I'm doing theoretical physics. No, of course I'm not doing theoretical physics, I'm doing semiotics. And uh, who does theoretical physics? I believe many girls out there just go and search for them. I also have my several favorite YouTubers who are girls and they do theoretical physics. Me? I'm learning from my younger brother who does theoretical physics and Stephen Hawking. My name is Daria and you're watching Unpo Daria Show. So today we will talk about latest book by Stephen Hawking. A brief answers for the big questions. Are you excited? I prepared something very special for you here. Of course, this book was published already after his death and it is rather a collective work which presents his writings which were not published before. And I have to say that most of you probably know Stephen Hawking as an ingenious scientist in theoretical physics, but he actually had a unique vision of this world. And we will dig a bit deeper right now. First, I wanted to say that when I was studying how to write critical reviews for artworks, and we can consider any book including this is a masterpiece, one should actually never really tell you what's exactly book about, but tell rather what meaning it will bring to your life. Go just right forward without long conversations. I will tell you, I definitely believe that everyone should take this book and have it. It's a bookshelf and definitely try to read it. Maybe you won't like it, but I believe that brave and optimistic man Stephen Hawking is the person you need in your life especially now. First, let's say a couple words about our world. I obviously don't want to talk about pandemic or other disasters which happen in politics or economy nowadays, because to be frank, these are not everything we should care in our life, even though it seems television pretty crazy about it. And besides infinite amount of new technologies which are coming to our life, and you probably notice it when Elon Musk did started his rockets and successfully landed in ISS, connected to ISS, our life will definitely change very drastically in the next 10-20 years. According to some data, about 100 professions would not be relevant for the new economy of the new world. And what relation all this has to the quantum mechanics and uh, physics in general? Well, probably the fact that all the technologies nowadays are existing exactly thanks to the fact that we have quantum mechanics in our scientific world and in our life. Well, for example, I have possibility to record this video because of quantum mechanics findings. And you are able to watch this video on YouTube exactly for the same reason. And how long did it pass between first computer and everyone being able to use the technology and being required to know about this technology? Well, less than 60 years. So I believe that our life is going like a snowball and we should adjust with a new knowledge and new skills. And <laughs> physics and understanding of the physics is one of the skills which needed for you and me, even though we probably never work with the particles or any kind of uh, CERN equipment. I also have to say that besides everything, Stephen Hawking had amazing sense of humor and you definitely can feel it in the book. And I would like to start with extraction short citation from the part from which we start deepening Stephen Hawking had with paragraph from why we must ask big questions. 
In this chapter, Stephen Hawking talks about his childhood. And actually, if you did watch the movie, the theory of everything, small remark here, the theory of everything, a real name for a physical theory explaining how the things work in the universe, uniting quantum mechanics and mechanics of Newton. The theory of everything, it's absolutely amazing representation of him. And I would like to share with you what Stephen Hawking himself tells about the movie. Eddie Redmine plays a particularly handsome version of me. In my third year at Oxford, I noticed that I seemed to be getting clumsier. I fell over once or twice and couldn't understand why. And I noticed that I could no longer row a sculling board properly. It became clear something was not quite right. And I was somewhat disgruntled to be told by a doctor at that time to lay off the beer. And actually, if you've ever been in Cambridge or another student campus in Europe, you know that the beer is the local tea. Even the DNA was discovered in Cambridge in the pub. Exactly in the same chapter, Stephen Hawking tells that he was experiencing ups and downs and you obviously can understand it taking into account his condition. But for me, as a site observer, it actually looks like this guy had incredibly fun life. He managed not only being married twice and having three children, but also being divorced twice. Besides everything, he was very open-minded about different projects and almost never tell no if his physical condition did allow to participate in different sitcoms and we can remember his beautiful appearance with Sheldon Cooper in Big Bang Theory. And actually, to my personal perspective, I think character of Sheldon was somehow drawn from Steven. They both did admire Einstein, they both interested in string theory and cosmology, and obviously they both make our life much more funny. The research done by Stephen Hawking and other scientists definitely did change our understanding of the world. And sometimes it seems that sciences do not really influence humanities and vice versa. But to be honest, to me, they both are very interconnected. And uh, obviously the research of Stephen Hawking starting from his PhD thesis in which he was thinking about the beginning and expansion of the universe did prove us one very interesting thing. Universe work with a certain physical laws. And that means that there is no really need for some magical fortune to start the existence in general. And probably this is why the first chapter of this book called Is There Is A God? So, was it difficult to me to read this chapter? Somehow, yes. Because I had very solid confirmation to many things which I did think ever before. Because semiotics, as you know, it's obviously not a quantum physics. But uh, it's definitely research the way system works. And according to the semiotics, many systems, like for example our bodies, are self-organized. And to have possibility to take a part in semiosis, in other words, to produce the meaning, the systems should be self-organized. But continuing through the contents of this book, I would like to announce several chapters and stop by some others confronting them with uh, my own ideas and with the semiotics. And what I would rather propose you to do is to think about these questions too. Because before you read and know the answer of Stephen Hawking, it's very nice to see how your own idea about something correspond or goes completely opposite direction. So the main questions are like, is there is a God? 
what we already did talk about, how did it all begin. So here we talk about from where universe started. And here is also the question about is time has a beginning, which is to me very interesting. Is there other intelligent life in the universe? Can we predict the future? What is inside a black hole? Is time travel possible? Will we survive on Earth? Well, I believe lately we have too many apocalyptic movies traveling to anti Alpha Centauri trying to save our lives. Well, maybe better try to, you know, take care of what we have already and then try to find a new home. But continuing, should we colonize the space? And will artificial intelligence outsmart us? And the last but not least, how do we shape our future? So now, Stop the video and try to write down some of the answers. If you want, write here in the comments so we can all discuss and think what is your idea about Stephen Hawking book. The last chapter, How do we shape our future, starts with the talks about Albert Einstein. And Hawking tells that one of the main tools in Einstein creativity was actually creativity, yeah, the scientific work which take roots in the creative ideas of the scientist. I believe that in today's academia is not very common to use your creativity to, <laughs> yes, to produce absolutely crazy series. But I have to say, if you have crazy theory, as Stephen Hawking himself claims, you should work on it, and it doesn't matter how crazy it is. Having questions is much more important, because when you have questions, you will have possibility to find an answer. And if you want, it's much better when you even doesn't try to ask the question. So in this chapter Stephen Hawking talks a lot about our future from the philosophical and even political point of view. And obviously it was not possible even for him not to think about what is going on nowadays in our world. I guess the most impressive part of this book is that Hawking gives quite solid answers with the support of the calculations done from quantum physics. And the fact is that when we think about time traveling or predicting the future, we think about our world, which supposedly works very different from quantum world. So all these questions raised by Stephen Hawking actually make me think about absolutely different perspective to our world. And you know, my mistake was in the fact that I have no patience at all. I never managed to arrive to the end of the TV series without checking on internet what is actually the conclusion of all the events I see on the screen. And obviously I was reading this book not in the order it stated here, but rather, you know, in the manner which would allow me to get answers to the questions which interest me the most. And the fact is that quantum physics is not really optimistic science. I mean, it gives you a lot of opportunities and a lot of possibility to see through the things, to get different perspective. But welcome to little personal crisis. After all, you realize that you live on a kind of small planet in the universe, which is very vulnerable to all these things which are happening around the solar system and uh, even on the Earth, inside the Earth. And besides this fact, we humans, we make our life pretty difficult. So we probably have too much free time, so we use it to 
stay on a nerve of each other. But on the other hand, if you will read this book in a certain structure, exactly as it created here, you will have a really optimistic perspective. Because Stephen Hawking definitely was an optimist, and if he was sad for several days in his life, which he definitely describes here, he didn't stay sad for very long. And one can read in the afterward written by his daughter that uh, he was amazing man, amazing father, he was very supportive, and besides all the problems happening in his life, he was getting up every morning, dressing up and going to the university to work on the future for the humanity. And I believe this idea lies in the heart of this book, and even if physics may seem to be very impersonal and very complex, I suggest you Stephen Hawking, because he knows the things and he tells them with love, in a very simple way. I hope this review can be interesting for you and would encourage you to read one or two books by Stephen Hawking or at least watch an interview with his participation and maybe one day even visit Cambridge when we all finally can travel again. <laughs> Please let me know if this video was interesting for you and useful by sharing or liking it and of course leave me a comment because I'm desperately looking for the people with whom we finally can discuss Stephen Hawking works from newbie's point of view, so to say. I wish I would have <laughs> the skills of the theoretical physicist, but I don't yet. I'm working on it. I've tried to... I'm I did start to read Landau's. <sighs> yes, it's very complicated if you are not very great in math and physics, but I believe if you have a certain determination, you definitely can reach everything. Thank you for watching and may the semiotics be with you.